Yo, what is going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another video. So today we're going to be ranking every single brawler in Brawl Stars, all 84 of them including Kenji. So let's get right to it. We're going to be ranking brawlers from common all the way up until legendary. So Shelly first, let's get this rolling. We're just going to put Shelly in the C tier. She's not too good at very many things. Obviously, she's a great anti-tank and does have a stun, which is really important with her super. But unfortunately, she's just a little bit too one-dimensional, not good in many modes, not good at many things. So C tier for Shelly. Coming in next, we have Nita, and we're going to put Nita into the A tier. I think she's easily one of the more underrated brawlers in the game. At the very start of the game, most people's highest brawlers, second highest or third highest brawlers are Nita. And even in esports, you guys see Nita has a crazy play rate, and she's played absolutely everywhere that's basically not Bounty or Knockout. Next up, we have Cole, and Cole's going to go into the B tier. Now, Cole is really good at what he does, which is absolutely shred brawlers, especially in Heist. But outside of that, he's not very good. Because I respect that he is so good at Heist, he's literally the first, second, or third best brawler there. We're going to give him B tier just off of that. But outside of that, Cole is not very good. Next up, we have Bull, and he's going to go into the C tier. I feel like Bull desperately needs a rework and needs something changed about him. You guys know he's only good in Heist. Maybe sometimes in Brawl Ball or Gem if you're really skilled with him and make a really skilled play with Stomper. But outside of that, Bull is completely useless. You know, I'm going to make a D tier because I feel like that's needed and I'm going to put Brock right into it. Brock just really hasn't been the same since all the hypercharged brawlers came out. He's just a little bit too underwhelming. It doesn't have any dynamic abilities or stuns that really make him useful in the meta right now. Next up, we have Primo and I actually think Primo is really good. We're going to put him at the top of the B tier. He's pretty solid in brawl ball like he is one of the best brawl ball brawlers for sure but i think he's also kind of usable in heist and a couple other maps you can definitely make him work so i'm going to give primo some respect and put him into the b tier next up we have barley and barley is one of the best brawlers in the game we are 100 going to put him into the a tier he has one of the best hypercharges in the entire game and he's just so good for area control so easy a tier for my boy barley Next up is Poco, and we're going to put Poco in the B tier. Now, again, Poco is a really good brawler. He's one of the best, or if not the best healer besides Barry and Brawl Stars at the moment. But obviously, Poco just doesn't deal enough damage. So if you're facing brawlers like Primo or Nita that are very good up in your face or have spawnables, then Poco's just not very good. Next up, we have Rosa, and I've always thought Rosa's a lot better than she has been. So I'm going to be fair, and I'm going to put Rosa in the B tier, but I feel like she can almost make A tier work. I mean, Rosa is one of the most dynamic brawlers in the game. Once you get that hypercharge and super, there's literally nothing in the game that can stop you outside of a stun. But even that stun is only temporarily holding you in place for a little bit. Next up is Jesse, and Jesse's going to get the C tier. Jesse's just not dynamic enough. The super is really good, but that's about it. She's not a very good mid anymore on every map that's not gem fort. And I just don't see a spot that Jesse really shines on any mode. So she's going to get the C tier. Next up is Dinah, and Dinah's going to go into the B tier as well. He is a weird thrower where if you're good at the game, you are insane with Dinah. Like, if you're a good Dinah, Dinah could be S tier. But if you're bad with this guy, like, just put him all the way in F. So it kind of depends on you guys, but if you hit shots, you win. If you miss shots, you lose. There's nothing more to Dinah. So that's why we're going to put him right in the middle in the B tier. Next up is Tick, and I'm going to put Tick in the C tier because I feel like Tick is slightly falling off right now. I mean, Tick is a good brawler, and especially my competitive teams have always played Tick. But at the same time, it kind of feels like he's just not good at too much anymore. Like in Knockout, I think Grom or Sprout is better. Or even Barley because their supers are all way better endgame. I feel like he also doesn't do a lot of damage. Whereas someone like Dinah or Larry or Barley again can do a lot of damage. So I feel like Tick's just in this really weird spot where his hypercharge is okay. His shot's okay. His range is okay. Everything's just okay. But I feel like he just gets outclassed at the moment by other throwers. Next up is 8-Bit. And I'm going to put 8-Bit into the B tier. Because he's pretty good in Heist. And he's pretty good as a mid. And that's enough to be B tier in my books. Next up we have Rico. And I'm honestly going to put Rico at the very, very top of the A tier. Now on a lot of maps, Rico is 100% an S tier brawler. But he does have his weaknesses, which is open maps. And there's a lot of open maps too. So top of the A tier. It depends on the map you play him on. But Rico is absolutely insane. Next up, we have Daryl. And Daryl is going to be our first S tier brawler. I mean, Daryl is absolutely insane with the double roll. It's a very nice buff. I feel like he definitely needs some type of nerf. Because now his mobility is just really crazy. He can just roll around and do this absolute crazy stuff. And I feel like that's just a little bit too good to keep up with his damage, the immunity on his roll, 
and just, just everything he gets is insane. So, I mean, S tier for Daryl, it's a no-brainer. Next up is Penny, and I'm going to put Penny into the D tier. I've been saying this all year. She desperately needs a buff. We need to see it happen. Now is Carl, and Carl we're going to put into the C tier. He's just not dynamic enough anymore because all these brawlers have stuns or knockbacks or things that make Carl's only way of killing for the most part, which is his super, totally ineffective. His fire gadget is actually okay, so he does escape the D tier because you can kind of play on matchups, but still, I don't really like the Carl pick right now. Next up is Jackie, and same thing, C tier. I feel like she just gets outclassed by way too many tanks right now. Her speed which is her way of getting close enough to brawlers, is not even nearly as good as Rosa's slow or Primo's jump or speed star power or Daryl's rolls, Buzz's hook, Bull's super. I mean, Jackie has a super to pull in as well, but it's just not as good as these other tanks when it comes to getting as close as you want to the other brawlers. So easy C tier could even be D tier, but she does have a hypercharge, so we'll give her C tier for now. Next up is Gus, and Gus is actually pretty good right now. We're going to put Gus into the A tier. I don't really know what happened with Gus, but it feels like he just does a lot of damage right now. And the shield is obviously really good. The gadget is obviously really good. I do wish that gadget still gave a knockback, though, because that did help Gus a lot. But he's in a really great spot right now, and I like Gus a lot, too. He's good in a bunch of different modes. I would just avoid him in Heist and Brawl Ball because there's a lot of damage there, and, and Gus doesn't really have that. But Bounty, Gem Grab hot zone you name it gus is a really good brawler next up is Bo, and Bo is going into the d tier i mean just not very good on anything outside of snake prairie so he's gonna be stuck in d ems is next and ems is a pretty weird brawler because ems just feels like she's not excelling at anything right now but we're still gonna give her b tier because she's good enough at enough things for her to get into this rank now we have Stu, and Stu has been a consistent, one of the best brawlers in the game for a while. We're going to put him in the A tier. Both gadgets are really good. Both star powers are really good, although I do prefer the heal one. And you just name it. Outside of having no damage, Stu's insane at everything. So that's why I like Stu. A tier, easy. Next up is Piper. You guys know Piper is my girl. So also going on the A tier, it's just too easy with Piper. A lot of damage, a lot of range. What is there not to like? Next up, we got Pam, and I'm going to put Pam into the C tier. I mean, Pam is really good on hot zone and for holding control, but that's about it. So very one-dimensional at the moment. I wish she had a little bit more damage, but outside of that, Pam in the C. Next up, we have Frank, and Frank did fall off a little bit. He was definitely an S tier brawler in the last patch, but in the current one, at least he's A tier. He's just... It's weird when you face a Frank because when you want to finish a kill on someone with a lot of brawlers, you kind of just walk in a straight line and auto aim your last shot. But then when you're facing a Frank, you can get pulled in by him and he has that incredibly fast shot and he does 5,000 damage, whacks you again, does another 2 point something thousand damage and you're dead. Like you have to be very careful when facing a Frank. Frank is just insane. Easy A tier. Next up, we have BB, and BB's going to go into the C tier. I just wish she was better at a couple more things, but I feel like she's on the rise. So C tier for now, but hopefully she's going to move up soon. Next, we have B, and B, as well as Gus, has slowly creeped back into the meta. We're going to give B, B tier, which is kind of where she's been all year, but no buffs, no nerfs. That's usually what happens. Brawler stays stagnant, so B stays in B. Next up is Nani, and to be honest, unless you're playing Nani for the sole reason of pissing off a Piper, a Mandy, or an Angelo... There's just no reason of playing Nani. Nani's going to go into the C tier only because she counters all the best range brawlers. So in knockout or bounty, Nani is really good. But outside of that, she's useless. So C tier 100%, but it's only really good into a few matchups. And if you don't even face those matchups on those modes, Nani's not really that good. Next up is Edgar and all you Edgar mains deal with it. C tier. I'm not even explaining Edgar. I'm going straight on over to Griff, and I'm going to put Griff in the D tier. Now, if Griff gets a hypercharge that breaks the map with his shot, with his super, which I totally think it's going to be, I totally think fits his brawler, and I totally love, I totally see him hitting S tier, or at least A tier. He's going to be the best anti-tank or one of the best anti-tanks in the game. But until he gets that hypercharge, he is stuck in the D tier for me. Next up, we have Grom, and Grom is going to go in the C tier as well. I mean, just like I said earlier, he's good at knockout endgame, but that's about it. His super is really good, but on any other mode, Grom is really not that effective. So we're going to put Grom into the C tier. Next up, we have Bonnie, and you guys just know how I love doing Bonnie. I ain't wasting no time. D tier for Bonnie. She's not that good at that many things. Like, I get it, guys. If you're playing at 400 trophies and you hit three shots or four shots and you jump right onto someone's head, they don't know how to play against the Bonnie. It's easy. I get it. 
But if you're playing at anything above that rank, where people know how to play the game and know how to deal with a Bonnie, she is so easy to beat. I'm sorry, guys. D tier again. Next up, Gale. And this is our second S tier brawler. Gale has been S tier for a couple of patches now. And he's just insane. The hypercharge super is probably the best hypercharge we have in the game right now. It's like impossible to mess up. So S tier for Gale, one of the best brawlers in the game, if not the best right now. Next up, we have Colette, and Colette has very few counters. We're going to put Colette in the A tier. Just a massive damage dealer, completely hard counters tanks. Both star powers are good. The healing gadget is insane, and even into some range brawler, she's not that bad. So I do really like Colette. Not very many weaknesses. Easy A tier. Next up, we have Belle, and as much as I love Belle, she's just not the greatest right now. So we're going to put her in the B tier. And when I say not the greatest, I just mean by Belle's standards. I mean, Belle is always a good brawler. She's always a consistent range brawler that does good damage up close the mark is really good the traps are really good like bell's always going to be decent but for bell standards i feel like she's not the best right now because there's just a lot of range brawlers that overshadow her and with the re-emergence of gus that's another brawler that's a range brawler that deals with bell pretty well so b tier for bell coming up next is ash and ash is going to be our first f tier brawler and i i i love ash like ash is one of my favorite brawlers in the game and you could definitely make Ash work. I do it on a bunch of ladder maps. I'm not saying he's unwinnable. But at the same time, he needs help. Like a hypercharge to Ash would feed families. It would feed families. Ash would be the best brawler in the game instantly. We need that. So let's get him it. But right now, he's F tier. Next up, we have Lola. And Lola's lucky that I'm not putting her in the D tier. I'll save her and I'll put her in C. Again, she's just not very good at very many things. She kind of feels like a weird cult in a way where it's easier to hit shots, but you do less damage. And the only payoff for playing cult right now is getting on safe and doing a ton of damage on heist or fully countering tanks. So if, he, if you take that away from Cole, it's like, what is he even good at? And that's kind of how Lola feels. So, I mean, yeah, you can make her work into brawlers like Meg or tanks or, or mid ranges. Like you could definitely make Lola work, but it's like, what is she really actually good at? Nothing like crazy. So she's going to get the C tier. Next up, we have Sam and Sam needs a buff. He's needed a buff for a while. And I don't really have too much more to say about Sam. Good on heist, good on gem grab ish to take gems and good on brawl ball, but he's going to be D tier for now. Next up, we have Mandy, and I feel like Mandy's kind of fallen off a bit. I'm going to put her at the end of the B tier just because I feel like she has a lot of counters right now. And the more hypercharges that come out, the worse it is for Mandy. She doesn't have a hypercharge. I feel like hers isn't going to be very good. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know, but I feel like she needs a little bit of a kick to get back into the meta. So bottom of the B tier, I feel like she's a little bit too good for C tier. So that's a fair place for her for now. Next up, we have Macy, and same as Ash. I mean, something's got to change about Macy. Thing with Ash is he could be fixed with a hypercharge. Macy already has one. And the issue with Macy is when it was three shots for super, she was really insane. And four, so four shots, sorry, she was really bad. So it's like, wh like, what do we even do at this point to Macy? We have to figure something out that isn't giving her three shots for super to make her better. Next up is the fish. And fish is going in the F tier. And I actually like the buff where Hank gets hp from his super but that doesn't make him any more playable so he's still gonna go into the f tier although he is better and again just like ash i know i keep relating all these f tier brawlers to ash he's not unwinnable it's just kind of difficult and he has a lot of counters so that's gonna be an f tier brawler again coming up next is pearl and i'm gonna put pearl in the c tier and not just because i lost on double match point to make worlds with pearl but because i just feel like again she's not the greatest at anything besides knockout into specific matchups I feel like when she cooks up, maybe if she did a little bit more damage, she would be more dangerous. But right now, it just feels like she doesn't have enough range, enough damage, or just enough anything really to be useful. And her super kind of sucks. So it's like, I don't know. She needs she needs some help. All right, next up, we have Larry. And Larry, just like Barley, so I'm going to put him right beside Barley, is our other best thrower in the game. Both of these brawlers are just really good against mid-range slash aggro brawlers. Like when you get Barley super and Larry super, it's good at pushing brawlers back. Every other thrower kind of feels like it gets countered by tanks a little bit too hard so these brawlers are very good because they're the only throwers that are predominant in the meta and obviously they throw over walls so a lot of brawlers just can't deal with them very good larry's insane on like all the modes he, he could honestly even be s tier like you can argue barley and larry are actually s tier at least in competitive they probably are but on ladder i'd probably keep him in the a tier next up we have angelo and angelo just like piper is an a tier sniper the best snipers in the game he's just insane but I low-key feel like 
he can hit B tier in the next patch. So we'll see how that goes. But as of right now, he is 100% A tier. Next up, we have Barry. And Barry's going to be A tier. And I know he's a thrower just like Barley and Larry. But let me explain. As actual throwers, Barley and Larry are better. But because Barry can heal, Barry has a completely different play style. Now, if you're playing Barry versus Barley or Barry versus Larry or Barry versus Dinah, the Barry's going to get pooped on. Like, he's not good thrower versus thrower. But if you're facing, let's say, Meg, Amber, and Lola, just three brawlers that kind of chip and don't do a lot of damage, Barry is absolutely insane as a healer at just not allowing brawlers to walk through choke points. Like, Barry is just a very unique, interesting brawler. But don't rate him like you rate Larry and Barley as a thrower because he's more of a healer than he is a thrower, if that makes sense. Next up, we have Mortis. And Mortis is like, he's A tier. I mean... He counters a lot of the brawlers in A tier. If you guys just look at the A tier right now, like what does Mortis even do bad into here? And his hypercharge is just insane. So easy A tier for Mortis. I love that Mortis is insane right now. Next up, we have Tara. And I haven't played her hypercharge enough, but it does seem really good. So we're going to put Tara into the B tier. The hypercharge was definitely needed. And she's pretty good now at cycling supers. So, I mean, we're going to see what happens with Tara. Maybe she's even better. Next up, we have Old Reliable Gene, and I'm going to put him into the A tier just because he's so good at, at just so many different things. Like, the higher in trophies you go, the better Gene definitely gets. So, if you don't think Gene is worthy of an A tier, but instead of a B or a C, I completely understand. But I just can't ignore how good Gene is at so many different things if you play him properly. So, we're going to give him the respect and put him A tier. Next up, we have Max. I'm going to put Max right beside the Gene. I mean, Max and Gene are just both like the best support brawlers you could have in the game, basically. So Max is there, the speed, the damage, the fact that he helps other brawlers like crazy. I mean, what isn't there to like about Max? Next up, we have Mr. P and Mr. P is going into the F tier. I mean, just not enough damage, not enough. The penguins either need a buff or the damage needs a buff or his HP needs a buff. One of those three things need a buff and Mr. P is seriously going to become a lot better. Just not at the moment. Next up, we have Sprout. And Sprout is going to sneak his way into the C tier. Again, a really good thrower. But it's kind of like Dino, where if you miss shots, you lose. If you hit shots, you have a decent chance of winning. But he doesn't have the explosiveness of Dino. It's just kind of annoying to face a Sprout that hits every shot. But the walls are also really good at end games or at some positions in Bounty. So we're going to put him into the C tier. Next up, we have Byron. And most people have Byron in the A tier. I'm going to put Byron into the B tier. Just because I don't feel like Byron does enough over the course of a game. Like, he doesn't have any pop-off plays. It's only if you hit a lot of shots and cycle a lot of supers. So, I'm going to put Byron B. Just because I feel like he doesn't have that explosiveness that you need to be a crazy A or S tier brawler. Next up, we have Squeak. And Squeak is going into the F tier. I mean, I like Squeak, but he needs more damage, more range, more something. He's just not good enough right now to deal with the hypercharged brawlers. Next up, we have Lou, and I'm going to put Lou into the B tier because I think he still does a lot of damage. I think he still is really good into tanks and midrange, and that's a lot at, that you could ask for right now. If you look at some of the best brawlers in the game right now, Gale, Daryl, Nita, Mortis, Frank, Colette that we have out right now, Lou is good into all of those. So obviously he's matchup dependent where if he faces range or throwers, he's not so good, but that's why you just play him in heist. I mean, sorry, not heist. You play him in hot zone. You play him in brawl ball where you know there's going to be high HP brawlers and you're going to watch him do crazy work. Next up, we have Ruffs and I'm going to put him in the D tier out of respect that I love Ruffs and he's a pretty good brawler and competitive, but he he needs a buff. I've been saying this for a while. He doesn't do anything besides give treats and the treats just aren't doing enough right now. So D tier for him. Next is Buzz and Buzz goes in the B tier. Buzz belongs in B tier. Good in heist. Good in some hot zone maps, good in Brawl Ball, good in some gem maps. So let's give him the respect. Even in Bounty on some maps, if you're facing two throwers or two range and a thrower, like you can you could get work done with Buzz. So definitely B tier. Fang to me right now just feels like a worse Buzz. I'm even going to put Fang actually in the D tier. Like I know he's insane and if you're Terry, you can do crazy stuff. And look, I can do crazy stuff on Fang too. But playing Buzz is just 10 times easier than it feels right now than playing Fang. So we're going to put Fang into the D tier. Next up, we have Eve, and I feel like I'm crazy hating right now, but Eve is going to go into the C tier as well. I know I'm just putting a bunch of brawlers at the bottom, but that's how it feels like right now. It doesn't feel like a lot of brawlers are really excelling. Now, obviously, we still have to get to Legendary, which has basically all the good brawlers, but I mean, Eve is not that good right now. Needs more damage. Now, we have Janet, and Janet, 
I'm not cutting her any slack. She's going in the D tier. I know there's a lot of Janet simps, and I don't mean fanboys. I mean simps for Janet. But she's going to go into the D tier. She did get an upgrade on her super damage, which actually did help her a lot. And I still love her gadget that reveals enemies, doesn't let them regain. I like the fact that she does consistent damage. She's very close to C tier. In fact, I could easily put her in C tier. But she just feels like Penny right now, where she's well-rounded, but not good enough at anything, or not strong enough at a brawler, where I can give her above a D tier. Otis is next, and again, another just not so great brawler. Otis is going to go in the C tier. Otis fell off. I think when Otis gets a hypercharge, though, he's going to go right back up and be one of the best anti-tanks in the game. He's just needing it right now. And a lot of the brawlers that don't have hypercharges, I just mean, like, look at the bottom of our list. It's basically all non-hypercharged brawlers. So just let them catch up, and I'm sure they're going to get A tier, D tier, I mean, A tier, B tier, or just something good. Next up is Buster, and I'm going to lower him from my last tier list and put him at the top of B. He normally feels like an A tier brawler for me right now, but again, the lack of hypercharge is just really doing it for me right now. When Buster gets a hypercharge, like, crazy things are going to happen. He is probably going to be an S tier brawler, but for now, B tier. Now we got Gray. Gray is going to be in the C tier. He used to be better than he was because single fire brawlers that have no pierce and have no hypercharge just they're falling off. It's just the less damage, the less consistency. Like, it's just becoming more and more difficult to play those types of brawlers. But, obviously, his teleport mechanic is super unique. So, C is probably as low as he'll ever go. But, C for now. Next up is RT. And people are using that, like, Jackie double RT form like crazy. And he's going to be an A tier brawler. Because he's, like... The perfect mix of a range anti-tank and then an up-close anti-tank. Like, I really love what's been happening with RT as of late. I definitely need to play him more and get better at him because I love the style that he plays. But 100% A tier for now. Good in, like, every single mode. Next up, we have Willow. And Willow's going to go into the C tier. I actually like Willow. I think Willow's really good in competitive and a really good thrower as an anti-tank. I just like Larry, Barley, Barry a little bit more than I like Willow. Next up, we have Doug. Doug is going in the F tier. Doug is no good. Doug is either best or worst in the game. And right now, he's worst. So, that's it. Chuck is next. And just like Colt, we're going to give Chuck B tier only because of Heist. If you play Chuck only on Heist or like Shooting Star, he low-key works as well. But if you play Chuck only in Heist, you're going to be able to push him easily. Just make sure you know what mode to play him on. We got Charlie now. And Charlie's kind of creeping back up the meta. We're going to give Charlie B tier. But I would like to see Charlie be able to do a little bit more, maybe a little bit more damage or a little bit more range, and she's going to be insane again. Now we have Miko the monkey, and unless you have perfect matchups, I think Miko is just horrible, so I'm going to put Miko in the F tier. I, the mechanics are just a little bit too difficult for Miko to be too consistent unless you have great matchups. So if you're playing draft and you get a good Miko draft, I mean, by all means, he's probably insane. But normally, absolutely not. Next up, we have Melody. I'm going to put Melody in the A tier. I mean, she's insane at heist. She's really good at knockout when she has super and bounty when she has super. She's really good at taking gems on gem grab and then brawl ball. She can score crazy goals. So Melody's a really good brawler. I usually have her a tad underrated. So I'm going to give her the respect and put her A tier for today. Now we have Lily and Lily's going to go C tier. I mean, Lily's pretty good. Obviously matchup dependent. Once you run out of gadgets, she's pretty difficult to play. So C tier for me. Next up, we have Clancy the Crab. He's a crab for me. I don't care if he's a lobster to anyone else. He's a crab for me. He is going to be S tier. He's like the new and improved Surge. He's like Surge 2.0, essentially, where once he levels up and he's that maximum level and he can't lose it, I mean, it feels like you just automatically lose. I think it should take a little bit longer for him to get that final stage, but he's really good right now, and I think he's going to stay that way for a while. Next up, we have Spike, and Spike isn't really good right now. Like, I know a lot of you guys idolize spike i mean i have a spike mask a spike plushie spike toys spike shoes spike pillows like i have a lot of spike stuff and i get it i get it spike is like that cool cactus brawler kind of like crow who is just an og like whatever i get it but spike is just not great right now that's that's it i love spike he's just not great right now i hope he becomes better because he is one of the faces of the brawlers he's one of the top five or ten most well-known brawlers and i hope he gets better that's it now we got crow and crow is going to be a very high end b tier brawler i mean crow's just always insane always annoying always just a pain to deal with and now that he does like 40 percent to a high safe i don't even know that's just unfair next up leon and leon is going to go into the c tier needs a buff he was s tier for a little bit but now that, that hypercharge got nerfed he's no longer as good he's going to get that c tier treatment 
Next up, we have Sandy, and Sandy has been in S or A for as long as I can remember, but I'm going to put him as the very highest brawler on B, if Primo lets me do that, because it just feels like he's not that great right now. He's just kind of in the middle of everything. It feels like he's a little bit underwhelming at the moment, and that nerf to the hypercharge, like gain super, what hypercharge charge, like that did some work to Sandy. It really did. Next up, we have Amber, and we're going to put Amber right beside Sandy in the B tier. Amber, well, that wasn't where she was. There we go. That's where she's supposed to go. Amber, very consistent, very good. Again, along with Buster, I think these are the two most well-rounded brawlers that are going to get the highest jumps when they get hyperchargers. So as soon as Amber gets that hypercharge, like you guys look out, she is going to be a high S-tier brawler. Now we got Meg, and Meg has been consistently A tier for a while. I mean, just really easy to play, really well-rounded, very difficult to deal with. You have to, like, kind of kill her twice, it feels like, and that's just really annoying. So A tier 100%. Now we got Surge, and Surge is going to go A tier as well, right under the crab. Let's put him right under the crab, literally. Both these brawlers are really good right now. It just feels like there's a lot of damage and a lot going on in Brawl Stars. A lot of hypercharges, a lot of big plays, a lot of high HP. And you, when you get these brawlers that become better as they become higher level and they become insane at that highest level and it's really easy to get that right now well i mean these brawlers are going to be good and then you add the surge hypercharge on top of that which i love and wow insane brawler next up we have chester and i'm going to put chester at the very top of a tier which means i gotta move surge over there but chester is really good right now really consistent really good into about all the meta and i cannot say enough good things about chester now we got Cord. Cord is going to go into the B tier. One of the best anti-tanks in the game. Obviously, the, the dimension dynamics are just insane. And Cord is always going to be good. Next up, we have the Cat. The Cat did actually kind of fall off. So he's going to get bottom of the B tier. But he's still my second or third favorite brawler. So I'm going to keep him up there. We have Draco who fell off. I'm going to give Draco D tier. Because with the existence of Frank or Gale, it just doesn't seem like Draco can do too much at the moment. Now, our last two brawlers are Mo and Kenji, and Mo at the moment is the best brawler in the game. I know I said Gale could be, but it's Mo. The fact that you can go underground, pop back up, knock someone back, and just do unreal damage is crazy. And if you mess up your super, you can just instantly tap it to go back to your other form if you're like at a little bit of range or like just something like there's just a lot of plays you can do with Mo. He's way too good. And Kenji, I mean, I cannot wait for this brawler to come out. I want to main this brawler. I want him to be my favorite brawler. He is the coolest brawler we have ever seen in Brawl Stars, and I hope he is S tier. I just know he's going to be it. So that's my final tier list. Let me know what you guys think of it. I think it's my most well-rounded tier list I think I've made yet. If you guys agree, let me know. But that's going to be it for today, so I'll see you guys later. Peace.